All right, apparently uh, my Revelation 6 video got cut short. Not sure what's going on. So I figured I'll just redo Revelation 6. And if I remember right, I talked, I gave the David Koresh story how in 1993 I was living in Minneapolis. And uh, in that time, there was a great big flood in Iowa. And everybody was telling me about, you know, how uh, Iowa was like an ocean. It was, I saw the images, it was incredible. But I was living in Minneapolis. And, um, on the news and in the newspapers, on TV and everything, it was they were talking about David Koresh in Waco, Texas, how there was a compound and the, there was a standoff. All right, and this went on for days. So it was pretty dramatic. And eventually uh, the ATF went in there and they just burned them all, killed them all. But then following, you know, I found, heard, started hearing stories about how David Koresh had the seventh seal and he was going to unlock the seventh seal. And I had no idea what the Bible said, so I couldn't tell you at all. What the I couldn't tell you what the first seal was. I couldn't tell you nothing about the Bible. Uh, so I always found it interesting. So let's go uh, here in Revelation six and let's reveal what the seals are. And it's not that complicated. Uh, it's very simple. I know people like to try to convolute, uh, uh, confuse, and, and make everything so complicated, and it's not. But let us understand that when it's not really even uh, seals. You think of seals, you, you, you know, you, you seal your envelope or whatever, you close it, uh, you seal it up. Well, these aren't seven things that are being sealed. These are seven things that are being opened. Okay, and in a sense, I like to think of it as being opened up to the world. Okay. So these seven seals are being opened up to the world, and uh, it's going to give us a picture and understanding of uh, the past, the present, and what we should expect in the future, right? Uh, it's being revealed to us. That's, uh, you know, the big reason for the book of Revelation, so we can understand. All right, so let us start here. I, and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, opened one of the seals. So that's important to know. Not closed, not sealed up, but opened one of the seals. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and beheld a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now, this white horse, it has to be Jesus. In the beginning, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, so this has to be Jesus. Should be no dispute, no doubt about it. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Now, you could say, well, Cain was the first one to kill, right? So uh, this piece that's being taken from the earth, this you could go back to the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So once they had the knowledge of good and evil, uh, it's hard to have peace, right? Because some people take pleasure in evil. So this, you could argue, that's when... Uh, the this sort of entered into the world, right? So, and when he had opened the third seal and heard the third beast say, "Come and see," and I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, "A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny." And see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. All right, so you could you could uh, look at this as uh, sort of uh, you know balance. Uh, it says balances in his hand. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, equal or you know justice, equality. Uh, you know you could even look at it as uh, good and evil. This uh, uh, yin and yang, this polar uh, polarity, whatever. You could say this entered into the world. You know there. 
are a lot of ways, I guess you could uh, sort of relate this to in the world. If you, if you relate it to what we see in the world today, I think uh, that sort of balance um, uh, makes the most sense. Okay. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. Okay, and so I would equate this fourth, uh, this fourth horse, the pale horse, uh, with um, you know the gathering of uh, governments and armies and peoples and cities and so on and so forth. Um, perhaps somebody else could relate it to something better, right? But um, fact of the matter is, uh, there's sin in the world, and so because there's sin in the world, uh, there's death and hell, right? So all that's going to be eliminated, but it's not eliminated yet. So let's continue. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. All right, so the fifth seal is obviously um, the salvation of the Lord, right? Those of us that are saved, and so like think of the people that are in the graves right now that are saved, like it says in Thessalonians, uh, first the dead shall rise, and then those of us that remain shall be lifted up with them to meet the Lord in the air. So think of it, uh, for me, I think of it as, um, you know, we're in this period, this time period, where people are being saved, but then people are dying and then sort of waiting on us, if you will, for us to die and then also waiting for the Lord, you know, you got to keep in mind this is consistent with everything else in the Bible. All right. And then the sixth seal. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Okay, so let's let me stop right there and just go real quickly, if you will, to. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, hold on a second. So only take a second. So it's a Matthew 24. Oh my goodness, what? Good night. ESV, how'd that happen? This is ridiculous. Okay, this is all I wanted to show you right here in Matthew. So 24, 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of Jesus in the clouds of heaven. So this is a parallel to that, okay? And I beheld lo, um, I opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth cloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree cast through untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and the vile men, and the free man, hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains, and said unto the mountains, Fall on us, hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Now think about that. That's pretty heavy. That's pretty heavy stuff. So we're going to move on to 7, and, and then 8 It's going to get real juicy. So hold on to your seats. 
In fact, I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to let this thing play out so we get the full 10 minutes.